This is Vern Venom Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. One time as a little boy growing up back in Kansas, I heard an old farmer say that there are only three things in life that are free. The water you drink, the air you breathe, and the love of God. Since then, I've learned the water company sends out bills, and urban areas all over the world are spending millions of dollars every year to purify their air of the smog and toxic pollutants spewing into the atmosphere. So that now, literally, the water you drink and the air you breathe are no longer free. That leaves the love of God. Consider what that means, the central teaching of Jesus of Nazareth concerned the concept and the nature of God, not merely the theological theory of God, but the deep and vivid experience of God. In the old Hebrew viewpoint, God was seen more as a distant creator, ruler, judge, lawgiver. But Jesus taught that God is infinite and understanding, aware even of the withering flower and the falling sparrow, freely giving sunshine and showers to good and evil equally, just as the woman seeks for the lost coin and the shepherd for the lost sheep and the father rejoices over his returning son, so God delights in all his children, taught Jesus. And in his own life, he was a brim with love for everyone, Samaritan and sinner, prostitute and thief on the cross who hung dying next to him. And this very sort of love is the nature of the love of God. It is immediate, concerned, forgiving. According to history, the Roman consul Marcus Valerius was such a victorious leader in battle that the Roman people constructed a house for him atop Mount Palatine. The doors of most houses in that time opened inward, but Marcus Valerius requested that his home be constructed with the doors opening outward in order to symbolize his willingness to listen to anyone and everyone who desired entrance at his doorstep. Such precisely taught Jesus is the attitude of God toward humankind. God is infinitely interested in you as a person. God delights in communion and fellowship with you as a father delights in a son or daughter whom he loves. And that interior sense of spiritual security is the source of great joy and satisfaction in the living of your human life. Human life is not a meaningless succession of pointless minutes, hours, and days. It was created to be lived in vivacity, and joy. In one South American country, recently the mayor of a small town ordered the epitaph removed from a controversial gravestone in the village cemetery. Before he died, a certain man had written this epitaph for his tombstone. There it stood for all to see, inscribed in marble, and I quote, My fellow biped, this is how it began, biped meaning two-footed creature, of course. My fellow biped, this is the prosaic end of a spermatozoan that more than 80 years ago penetrated an ovum, began its evolutionary cycle, and ended up as carrion. End of quote. Is that all there is to life? Is that the entire sum and substance of human existence? A spermatozoan penetrates an ovum, endures its evolutionary cycle, then ends up as carrion, compare and contrast to that the teaching of Jesus, that humankind were created to have life and have it abundantly, to live in joy and purpose and high hope and idealism as sons and daughters of the living creator of this entire universe. This is the truth which modern humankind urgently needs to discover. We live in a world of billions of facts and a vast accumulation of knowledge. But what percentage of that knowledge of what we know factually is really important and essential to the living of your life. I read recently, for example, someone measured and discovered the index finger of the Statue of Liberty in New York City is precisely eight feet long, which is probably more than most people were interested in knowing about. It's possible to live an entire lifetime on this earth and learn literally millions of bits of information about literally thousands of different subjects without arriving ever at the slightest idea of who you are, what your purpose is in being on earth, why you're here, where you're going, what your cosmic origin and destiny really is, what profit is it to a man, asked Jesus, if he gain the whole world, or gain a whole world of knowledge even for that matter, but lose his own soul, somehow not perceive the spiritual meaning of life. The most vital issues of human existence are spiritual. You could learn thousands of facts about yourself without really finding yourself in the most profound sense. Neurological scientists recently announced 
that if you're an average person, you have approximately 45 miles of nerve fibers in your skin, which is interesting. Yet however much you may know about yourself physically, it remains something altogether different to know yourself spiritually, to know more than the facts of your existence, but to know the reason for your existence, to know more than your height and weight and your IQ, but to know your purpose, your reason in being alive. And yet the astonishing thing, the delightful thing, is that you can discover the answers to these very questions. You can not discover them entirely with your mind, but you can know them in your soul because the living spirit of the living God indwells your consciousness. A spark of the source of all reality is burning inside of you. God has a will, a purpose, a reason for your life. If you will choose with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength to center your life in the will and the wisdom of God, your life will never end. It's only beginning. Your life has just begun. You will begin to see new vistas, new potentials for your existence, living not as a cosmic orphan, alone, forsaken, but as an aware and alive son or daughter of the Most High God. To live in this faith is really to begin to live to begin to live in love, in purpose, in aspiration, motivated. And if you will, you may begin this new way of life this very instant. It begins in your consciousness, in your mind, in the consciousness that you this instant are infinitely loved because you are. It is not fantasy. It is reality. It is real. And by faith you can know it that the God at the heartbeat and center of this vast universe of galaxies, of island universe after island universe, knows about you, knows your name, knows who you are, where you are, what you could be and become, if you will relinquish every fear and anxiety and trust God and begin to actualize the dynamic potentials God has planted like seeds of possibility within you to the religious skeptic, to the materialist. It may appear that the universe is entirely physical, that reality is wholly composed of atomic structure, physical energy. Reality may seem to be entirely material, yet, as man has repeatedly learned through the annals of human history, things are not at all always as they seem. Consider the color white, for example. To look at a field of pure snow, a stretch of dazzling, blinding whiteness, or to watch a bleached and laundered bedsheet rippling in the breeze on a clothesline to dry, so white that on a sunny day your eyes wince even to look at it, to contemplate that single color, white, would you not naturally presume, as mankind assumed for centuries, that white is the absence of all other colors? That's how it seems. But... All is not always as it seems, for as the great English physicist Sir Isaac Newton discovered hundreds of years ago, the color white is really a mixture of all the other colors of the spectrum. Utilizing a glass prism, Sir Isaac Newton first broke up the color white into its basic constituent colors of the spectrum, then next reversed this process by reblending all of the basic colors, and to the utter amazement of the entire scientific world, the result was, once again, the color white. One might quite reasonably assume that in blending together all of the colors there are, the result would be perhaps a basic black, dishwater gray, puce purple, banal brown, bruise blue, mud puddle magenta, gangrenous green, some color like that. But in fact, science has confirmed and reconfirmed the blending of all the colors results in simple white. Astonishing. It would not so have seemed, and yet it is true. Look then to the world about you. It may appear to be entirely material. A creation composed exclusively of physical reality. But are you really so sure? Is it all as it seems? Might there not, as poets, sages, philosophers, teachers of truth have with passion proclaimed for centuries, might there not be an entirely real, yet entirely unseen realm of spiritual energies coexisting with this world of physical things and beings? What of truth? What of beauty and goodness? Are these exclusively material phenomena? What about love? Nobody's ever seen it, weighed it, measured it, quantified it mathematically in a scientific laboratory. And yet love is the most profound, noble experience which human beings can know. There is a sphere of spiritual reality not light years distant in this universe, but here, near, now, as the Master declared it, 
the kingdom of God is within you. And again he proclaimed, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God is omniscient, all-knowing, omnipotent, all-powerful, omnipresent, everywhere. God is the source and center, the very genesis of all, the father of this whole cosmic family. And you, believe it or not, are a son or daughter of this living God. Only believe it. Believe it. Know it. Claim it in faith. You're kin to the Creator. You are infinitely valuable. God loves you as if you were the only person in all this universe. And to find and come to know this living God is the supreme delight of all of mortal life. Spiritual things are real. There was a cartoon I saw. It showed two angels up in heaven talking. They both were dressed in white robes and wings and standing on a cloud. But one of the angels was wearing in this cartoon a pair of enormous snowshoes. And he was saying to the other angel, I keep getting the feeling I'm going to fall through. This is how many people feel about religion that they can't entirely trust spiritual reality. It isn't substantial enough to stand on, they suppose. It isn't real enough to live by. And yet, a reading of history reveals that the most substantial and real men and women who've ever lived their lives on this earth have been men and women of faith. Faith is far from the ephemeral, misty, vaporous nothingness which the thoughtless may have supposed it is. No, faith activates life. It's been men and women of faith who have carved civilization itself from the chaos of wilderness around this world. Faith is far from an impotent daydream. Faith acts. Faith claims the highest, the noblest of ideals, then proceeds to bring these into being by acting on them. This Jesus of Nazareth taught not a wistful wishfulness, but a muscular, robust religion, a courageous, valiant giving of your life Whomever you may be listening to my voice on the radio, you may never have heard this broadcast before, but you're facing now the biggest decision you've ever faced and are ever going to face, the challenge to give your life to the God who gave you your life originally. To give your life to God without loopholes, escape clauses, or qualifying footnotes, the simple act of saying, here am I, use me. It is my will that your will be done. And thus to live your life in faith as the son or daughter of God you really are, is to begin to live in joy, love, peace, power, and purpose. Spiritual things are real. You can know these things because you can know the source of all spiritual things. The living God, whose living spirit indwells your mind this moment. Believe that, know that, and smile because all eternity stretches before you. And then write to us, will you? We really want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, any and all of this literature. Yours free, without cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell out mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.